All right, so this is a uh, Drawing Lewis Structures uh, extra practice worksheet that I've created. Um, and basically in this video, I'm gonna talk about uh, how I go about drawing the Lewis dot structures and then also thinking about um, formal charges and how to calculate formal charges for each individual atom um, as necessary for these different structures. So the first thing that I've done already is I've actually indicated or counted the number of valence electrons that each structure should have. And this should always be the first thing that you do. You always wanna know sort of, um, you know, how many valence electrons are, should show up in your actual final picture. If you have the wrong number of valence electrons in your picture, it's guaranteed to be wrong. So that should be step one, okay? So for this first one, this uh, formula is actually giving us a lot of information, a lot of hints on how to properly draw it. Since it's CH3, CH2, COOH, that really gives us some information or hints on the connectivity or the different groups that should be um, in my picture. So I'm gonna start by writing out CH3. So at this stage, I'm sort of just doing the skeleton structure, just trying to get everything lined up properly. So that's my first CH3. So since it says CH3, CH2, that's where I get that CH3. That's carbon with three hydrogens on it. Next, I've got a CH2. So again, since I've got CH3, CH2, that's sort of just working my way across, um, you know, filling in my Lewis dot structure. COOH. So I've been talking about this in my class about how this COOH is a very common carboxylic acid motif. Um, it's something that we're going to run into, a, a pattern that we're going to see again and again and again. So if you see this COOH, that indicates carbon with a double bond, then an OH bond um, as well. So this is the proper Lewis dot structure. All of these different atoms will have formal charges of zero. So um, all atoms have formal charge equal to zero. Um, so again, to calculate formal charge, I'll just do a few examples here. For this carbon here, it would be four valence electrons minus zero lone pair electrons minus four bonds equals zero. For this oxygen, let's just do this one here. It would be six minus four minus two equals zero. Um, that's how I calculate formal charge. Some of you may have, if you're, if you're not in my class, have, have a just slightly different way of calculating formal charge. You'll get to the same result, um, but I do the number of valence electrons minus the number of lone pair electrons, not the number of lone pairs, the lone pair electrons minus the number of bonds to that atom. So that should be my formal charge of zero. So in this Lewis dot structure, they all have got zero formal charges. BH3. So BH3, I'm going to start with my skeleton structure, and then I'm gonna be done. So I've only got six electrons. I know that I've got two electrons in each bond. So that's that's really all I can do. I can put those three different groups around my boron, um, and, and that's it. This boron is not following the octet rule, um, and that's okay. So sometimes if we have small atoms, basically from boron smaller, so boron, helium, obviously, hydrogen, we have a, a familiarity with that, not following the octet rule. Boron's sort of the same thing. If you calculate the formal charge, three minus zero minus three equals zero. So when we break the octet rule, uh, if we are having a formal charge equal to zero, that should sort of be okay. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine are really never gonna break the octet rule. But if we are smaller than that, we could have less than a full octet. And if we're larger than that, uh, which we'll see some examples here, I think later on, um, then that's also gonna be okay. We can, we can have high, uh, more than eight electrons um, for larger molecules. Okay, let's move right along. ClO4, we're gonna get one of those examples right here. Uh, Cl, I would start with my um, skeleton structure here with chlorine in the middle, my four oxygens arranged around that. Then I'm going to start thinking about formal charges and you know minimizing formal charges and you know that sort of stuff. Oxygen is going to follow the octet rule, and so one option here um, would be to start filling in double bonds. Um, but one way that I think about this, if I see that this overall molecule, this overall polyatomic ion, has a minus one charge, what that really is telling me is that one of my oxygen atoms is going to have a formal charge of minus one. So oxygen with one bond and six electrons, or three lone pairs, we can calculate the formal charge as six minus six minus one equals minus one. So that would be my formal charge for this oxygen. Um, and that's gonna be you know, how I get to this minus charge here. My, my formal charges have to add up to this overall minus one. 
Now, I want to minimize formal charges as much as possible. And I know that oxygen likes having two bonds because that's how it gets to a formal charge of zero. So if I actually fill in double bonds for the rest of my species here, we're breaking the octet rule for sure for this chlorine, but chlorine is a larger molecule, larger atom, and it actually is okay to break the octet rule. So for this chlorine, if we are gonna break the octet rule, we do want to double check, make sure that we are um, you know, having a formal charge equal to zero. This would be seven minus zero minus seven equals zero. So that is okay, and this is actually the best structure um, for this ClO4 minus. All right, let's move on to CH3 and H2. So again, just like we saw up here with that CH3 you know, group, we're gonna start with that C, H, 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 then N, H2. So that would be my skeleton structure. Uh, I can see that this nitrogen has not fulfilled the octet rule yet. Um, let's count our electrons, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I've got two electrons left over. We'll put those right on that nitrogen. Now we're fulfilling the octet rule and we've got minimized formal charges. Carbon nitrogen will always follow the octet rule. Keep that in mind. Um, so this is actually the best structure here for my CH3 and H2. Everything here has zero formal charges. So I've got a number of more, a couple more examples here to go through. So CO, 10 electrons, obviously our skeleton structure is gonna look like this. And now we need to figure out how we're gonna fill in the rest of those 10 electrons, right? I've got eight electrons to go. For CO, the best structure is actually gonna look like this. So here, I'm following the octet rule. I've gotta follow the octet rule for carbon and oxygen, right? So CO and F always follow the octet rule. But my formal charges are not gonna be minimized. My formal charges are gonna be, well, let's calculate them. 6 minus 2 minus 3 equals plus 1. And for carbon, it's going to be 4 minus 2 minus 3 equals minus 1. So I would have a formal plus 1 charge here and a formal minus 1 charge on carbon. Um, and that's okay, right? So for these situations, we're going to have to uh, follow the octet rule for carbon and oxygen. So this is the best structure that we can draw. Um, minimizing formal charges as much as possible, right? We don't want these to be like plus three or two or whatever, right? We wanna minimize them as much as possible, but this is the best way for us to do that. PCl5. Again, we're gonna break the octet rule here because phosphorus can do that. It's a larger um, atom, filling in a lot of electrons here. I know that chlorine is in group seven. It wants to have one bond and six lone pairs of electrons. That's how it gets the formal charge of zero. Uh, so that would, or that's one way, right? We saw another way up there. But when we've got PCl5, uh, this would be our proper Lewis dot structure. If you count up the electrons, it should have 40. Let's calculate the formal charge for phosphorus. Phosphorus has five valence electrons, minus zero, minus five equals zero. So again, we're breaking the octet rule, but since our formal charge is zero, we should be okay with that. H3O plus. So start with my skeleton structure. I went ahead and put that lone pair of electrons to fulfill my octet for oxygen. Calculate the formal charge for oxygen should be plus one. Uh, I guess we'll just show, go ahead and show that. Six minus two minus three equals plus one. So my oxygen has a formal charge of plus one. Um, so that's H3O plus. And then we've got one more HCN. So my skeleton structure here, um, and then I'm going to fill in a triple bond with my carbon. I know that carbon prefers to have four bonds to it. If I've got a single bond of hydrogen, that would be three bonds to nitrogen. And then lone pair of electrons on nitrogen, 10 electrons total, two, four, six, eight, 10. Everything here in this structure fulfills the octet rule. Carbon and nitrogen always fulfill the octet rule. Uh, and then my formal charges would again be zero for all of these. So carbon, four minus zero, minus four equals zero and nitrogen, uh, five minus two minus three equals zero. All right, so this is just a variety of different uh, Lewis dot structures. If you have any questions about any of these, feel free to comment below. Um, hopefully you find that helpful.